Welcome to Game Changers with me, Vicki Abelson, and my guest today is Mo Gaffney. Mo! Vicki! <laughs> Hello, Mo! Hello, darling girl. I'm so oh. glad that you're here. It's good to see you. It's good to see uh, you, You know, too. it wouldn't hurt to, if you could age a little, that's all. I'm just saying. You know, People are going to be, they're going to think you're a vampire or something because you always look the same. It's all fake. It's, I am so good with the filters. It, you know, it, when people see me in real life, they go, who the fuck are you? What'd you, what'd you do with Vicky, you old hag? <laughs> My son calls oh me oldie God. locks. Um, so, so Mo, I'm, you know, hmm. God, the last time you were on Mo, it was four years ago and we were bitching about an, an idiot that had taken office. We were complaining about the the Trump 20. Now it's the COVID 20. It's like, well, I just 20 haven't... would is a dream of mine. Uh, the COVID 30, let's say that, because this fucker keeps dragging on and on and on. Oh my God. Oh. And you know, you're the you're the perfect person to have on now because uh well, you're not on social media much, but you are an activist. So if you're not doing your activism through social media, how are you? We have to get out the vote, Mo. This is not funny. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing. I was very active for all, all right up to the, um, to the election and even after the election. Right. And um, then my, well, my mom was, my mom died uh, in a couple, couple of years ago. Oh, I'm and so, so I was in and out during that time. And right. um, uh, so, and I went on every freaking March you could go on during I know. I remember years. that you flew to yeah. Washington, to New to, York, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. So, yeah, to New York for the for the Women's March in Washington. We went down to Washington. Right. You see, um, and now I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm fucking tired. I am tired. Mm -hmm. I am tired. I've been doing this for a long, long time. A long, long time. <laughs> a long, long time. I did it in my work. I, I did it just as a regular, just as myself. And, um, I did it until I needed a, I needed a break, you know, and now we have this recall in, in California. So I will be gearing that up a little bit more as we get closer to the 14th, but. Um, so we're pretty close. Tell, so, so please tell people why they need to vote. Vote because you don't want a, a, a Trump supporter in the governor's office of California. Are you fucking kidding me? Vote. You've got to vote because the Republicans trump this up if you'll, excuse the uh, pun and um uh because you can in california you can recall the governor so they decided they would go ahead and try and they started making up all this shit about him and he's on the perfect nobody's perfect no right. politician is going to be perfect but he is a democrat he believes in our environment he believes in a 15 dollar minimum wage he believes in a woman's right to choose and so he believes in all the things that i think most californians believe in so don't, they send you the ballot. You don't have to do anything but say no and send it back. But you know, they're, confu they're confusing people though too. Cause it says, so you say no, but then it says, well, if he gets ousted, who do you want? And they're tricking people to circle another choice, which right. is fucked which up. Which is why I said, you know, which is why when I post about it, I say, just say no. And other just people say are no. saying, but shouldn't they? And I'm like, no, because no. guess what? If that happens, if they, if, if that happens, uh, it, it's not going to happen because it's not going to happen. Now they're saying that he won't be recalled. So fingers crossed. Oh, cool. oh but, yeah, but they're, uh, but they're also saying that there, is, well, I'm saying there's, there is a lot of democratic apathy. I hate to say that I've spoken to a few that didn't even know we were voting on a recall. Don't get me started. And so, but the ramifications is not just what will happen in California. What can happen, Mo, if a Republican becomes the governor? Well, he will appoint a freaking Republican senator for Dianne Feinstein, who obviously is not going to last forever. And that would be, uh, that would be, the end of everything that would be the end <laughs> we of need everything. every senator we can get if we want to if we want to not become an authoritarian uh nightmare uh, of biblical proportion uh so that's why it's important because uh, the governor gets to appoint the senator once the senator leaves and i don't know how long which is why we need younger people to be in these offices i mean i love a i love a uh somebody who knows what they're doing but they can know what they're doing at 38 <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, <laughs> and then decide to leave by 75, yeah. maybe. That's a good, that's a good long run. Uh, that's a good I don't think Joe, I, lo I love that Joe Biden's our president, but uh, he wasn't my first choice. And, um, you know, he's an old guy. He sh we need somebody, we don't need old white men constantly being in charge of shit all the time <laughs> because look where it's gotten us. I'm an Amy fan myself, but hopefully one day. Um, Amy, Amy. Gorbachev. Gorbachev. Yeah. Amy Gorbachev. I don't know who that is. Yeah. Isn't that her first name? Am I getting it wrong? Oh, oh that's her. Klobuchar? Korb yeah. I mean, Klo Klobuchar. Oh, Klobuchar. Yeah. 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 I thought you Klobuchar. said Gorbachev. No, I, I, may, I might have even said that, but Amy. Yes. I like her um, too, but I, I, really I like, like her. I liked Elizabeth. I wanted her to be. I, Elizabeth got my vote in the primary, but that yeah, only me too. went that only went so far. That didn't go very yeah. far. But I've come anyway. to love. I've, anyway, so 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 okay. So you're not. So tell. We were talking before we came on the air about uh, why you're not on the platform. So why why have you pulled back from social? Because you used to be very active on social media. Are you just yeah. tired, or what was the deal? I, I am a little, I am, I am a little <laughs> tired. Uh, and, you know, I just added, it just my voice added to a chorus of other voices. I don't think I'm a terribly important person. So I don't know that if I step away, which I did, you know, entire, you know, movements will fail if I don't say something about everything. So um, that's kind of why I stepped away. And because I think, I don't know how good social media is for uh, us as a people. I don't think, I think I'm trying to figure out if uh, the good outweighs the bad. That's what I'm trying to do. Because, I mean, social media got us in this mess. Uh, mm -hmm. It got us in a lot of messes, if you ask mm -hmm. me. And um, I think it got us in this mess where uh, people aren't getting vaccinated and um, want to kill Dr. Fauci and all that bullshit. I think that uh, I think social media has a lot to do with that. And I think Facebook does. I think Facebook is the most useless, excuse me, Facebook. I know we're on Facebook Live, but um, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, 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 an embarrassment. And Zuckerberg can go jump in the lake as far as I'm concerned because it's the nicest way of saying what I really think you should do. Um, yeah, I, you know, these people don't, they go to Facebook for their news and it's not a news, it's not a news source. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. Don down at the, you know, the mechanic shop who has a big idea about ivermectin. And um, oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. So, and then Don says, you know, I have ivermectin. I saw it over here on this uh, uh, get get rid of covid.com and it's made by some <laughs> freaking, you know, it's all ridiculous. Supplier, and we yeah. we can see this coming. We totally knew this was coming when mm -hmm. when the internet started in a way. Anybody can say anything and, uh, and they can say they're a doctor. And if enough people don't care to find out, then we believe that horse dewormer can uh, fix COVID. So go ahead and shit your brains out, but it's not gonna fix COVID. So, that's, so, that's so, if, so you're not doing social media. So Mo, I was telling you- was Look at social media. I just don't- Participate. I, did, I talked about the recall, definitely. Um, on social media, but other than that, uh, like with abortions, the abortion thing in Texas, I, I fought for abortion rights for 40 years. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. For 40 years, I fought for abortion rights. And um, I can't have a baby anymore. So uh, it, it's up to the young women now. I can't believe that this could happen. I honestly can't believe this, this could happen mm -hmm. and that, uh, some women have been so uh, lackadaisical about their own autonomy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it, it's shocking to me. It's absolutely shocking that women aren't out on the streets right now. Women who can reproduce and maybe don't want to aren't, aren't on the streets right now demanding that men fuck off when it comes to women's reproductive rights. Yeah. That's how I feel. We, mar we, women mar we, we marched uh, four years ago. We marched four yep. years ago, three we years marched. ago, two years ago. Yeah, two years we ago? Marched. Yes. We marched. Yeah, we do march. We I, marched. I've, we marched I've, marched. I've been to rallies. I've done everything you can possibly do. Um, and uh, shocking to me at all that anybody 
has a problem. Although I don't, I don't want to, I, I wouldn't march for anything now. I, 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 COVID has, I would not participate yeah, in Yeah, I don't want to get right COVID. Now. Yeah, no. I don't want to I mean, do it. No, but, uh, but if there was a big rally, I'd go. I mean, I'd go. I mean, I'd go. I'd go because. Yeah. Because we, we have, have to. to stand in solidarity. That's all there is to it. Mm-hmm. Whether we like it or not, we have to, you know, the Women's March in Washington and here in LA, <coughs> which I believe you went to. I did. The one here. Uh, but you because, were with uh, Gloria Steinem and shit. <laughs> it was great. Um, but it was terrifying. It was terrifying. We were there, we were marching, and we were absolutely mortified that people would vote for this man for president Mm -hmm. after everything he said and did Mm -hmm. after who he was who he's been i lived in new york when he was just that dickhead donald trump which he still (laughs) is obviously but uh and it was i couldn't believe he came i couldn't believe it i couldn't believe it i could not believe it still to this day i kind of don't believe it um (laughs) and i think in the future the only reason i'd like to stay alive for a super long time it's when they actually find out what really happened. I don't know what it was, but I know that he should not have been president and he should be in prison right now. I know well, that goes too. without saying this, yeah. this, this is for certain. So, so Mo, what was going on in your life when, when COVID hit, where, where were you at? Uh, you, how has COVID impacted your life? Were you active? Were you busy? <laughs> were you working? Were you well, doing I, stuff? My mom died in 2019. So oh, I so had just moved. I moved to San Diego to help with hospice care with my sisters. Hmm. Um, got a little place down here with them um, so we could each help my mother die. And then oh. she died. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, I did, you know, and so I was still down here. And I was thinking about getting a place back up in LA and uh, I did some work while I had to go to LA a few times to, to work, which was great. And then uh, the COVID happened and yeah. there was no reason to go back to LA <laughs> because there was no work going on. And so I didn't, I just stayed here and didn't work. And um, like a lot of us and just, uh, didn't get to see my kid and because he was in LA and I was in San Diego and you know worried about my sisters who are all two of them are essential workers and so and one of them worked at a casino which some think they think they're essential so (laughs) they all had they all worked during the the whole thing and did anybody get sick my sister who works at the casino got sick she got COVID (laughs) I'm gonna get a uh go a, a lozenge I don't have go get COVID. A, go get a lot. <laughs> That's what they all say. It's allergies. I know, but I really don't. I, don't I believe you. Know. Hi, Kathleen <laughs> Wilhoit. Kathleen's saying she Hi, loves Kathleen. Beauregard. Kathleen. Oh, loves Beauregard. I love yes. Kathleen Wilhoit. Is she still um, on vacation? So do I. I don't know. Kathleen, are you still on vacation? Isn't Kathleen like going someplace weird? At Atl- someplace like she's driving someplace to the other side of the country or something. And I still don't yeah. know what that's. What is that about? I don't even know what that's. I don't about. know what it's about. I just she got a gig, and I yeah, I just I, yeah. I just Kathleen, where are you going and why? She's going someplace far away with a new dog. I know that. I know that dog is so cute. Yes, it's a cute dog. Um, so your sister who worked in the casino got yes, an early case of got- COVID. She got an early case of COVID. She was very, and I was really worried about her because obviously it was during the scariest time and we didn't know what was going to happen. And Italy was right. a hellhole of tragedy. And um, she got very sick, but she didn't have to go to the doctor. Um, and uh, uh, then, but my, I have a sister who works in the hospital. <laughs> She's a, a, a phlebotomist and a lab tech in a, in a hospital. So. Wow. She was the one I was really worried about. And she didn't Thank get you. it. Nope. Wow. She did not get it. Well, they are very careful. Well, most of them are. There's a lot of dipshits who are also medical workers who, you know, who won't get vaccinated. And that I don't get that at all. I, well, I, get think, I think get now they're going to make them because, uh, yeah. because it got the FDA. A lot of them are making them. Yeah. 
And the funny thing to me with these people who don't want to get vaccinated is um, they're, they're worried about the jab, they call it, and that it's uh, whatever they think it's going to do to them. But there's millions of people who are vaccinated right now, and we're still alive. We're still bopping around. And guess what? You know, nothing, metal doesn't stick to me. <laughs> How about that? And um, so they're embarrassing. Uh, they're embarrassing. Anyways, uh, she didn't so get it. And then my other sister worked at a, a food joint and she didn't get it. So thank God. I'm grateful okay. for that. Yeah, that's good. So you were down there with all your family. So you weren't alone in the pandemic. You No, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would that would have been sad. I was a little frightened because my sister would come home from the um hospital and immediately go take a shower and wash her clothes. And so that was a little scary having somebody who worked in a hospital come yes. home here every day. Um but uh yeah, but she never got sick and and then she was one of the first I was going to say she probably got get a uh, vaccine. vaccinated by yeah. right away, yeah. She did. And so, so ha- how have you, okay, it's been, it's been over a year and a half. How, mm-hmm. how do you keep yourself busy? What does life look like in COVID land? Oh God, what does it, well, I've been a lot of stuff like everybody, I think. Yeah. And um, I wrote some stuff. Sorry, I have this in my mouth. I feel bad. That's okay. Don't um, that. I wrote some stuff. I, I wrote a show a while back, uh, a show about menopause um just with the menopause skits in it and it was really funny so we so we did that on zoom once and that was really fun so I thought I'm gonna write I'm gonna write more stuff for women um just at different stages of their life how fabulous yeah so I've written some stuff on that and that you know it comes and goes because when you can't really go do anything I don't know these people who like lost weight during the pandemic I think what the fuck is wrong with you (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> or you know they did they accomplished huge things because they had all the time in the world it's like I did I wrote a few things and I finished a lot of uh, viewing I watched a lot of and I read a lot of books that I did do that but I didn't you know change the world or or suddenly start bench pressing anything so <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been uh, able to write. I haven't been able to really focus. I mean, I write daily on, on because of the platforms, because of the shows. Mm-hmm. But I can't. I haven't been. I'm impressed oh, that you were. I can't yeah, focus. for a long time I didn't do anything. I, mm-hmm. Basically, I mean, I did. You know what I did do? Um, I did do uh, this dance thing on uh, YouTube. I did this dance thing, which was really fun. And then I got wait, wait, that. what kind of dance thing? I don't know these ladies who do a dance thing and they make up movements to a, like a I don't know to a, what's that song by Dua Lipa? I have no um, idea. But I just anyways, remembered something. You wanted to be a June Taylor dancer, didn't you? I did when I was a little bit when I was a little girl. I wanted to be a June Taylor dancer. I did, and I wasn't. I I danced in a, a Shakespearean festival, a couple of those. So that was good. Wow. Dancing on the green, it wasn't, for you know, it was professional because I got paid, but it wasn't professional because, you know, it wasn't like ballet dancing. It was just dancing like peasant dances and court dances. Nice. <laughs> Getting paid yeah, to dance fun. is a good thing. Yeah, it was really that's, fun. That's a good thing. But so- this other dance, it's just ladies that make up, uh, and so you can move around because I was absolutely not moving an inch. And I had to start before my, I don't know, my body just became, you know, spread out and then I couldn't walk a, a friend of mine's uh uh Fitbit said that uh he had walked 16 steps in a day <laughs> just literally to the bathroom to the bed to the bathroom to the bed that was it yeah 16 steps done for yeah I, I'm laughing but it sounds really familiar to me <laughs> so since we're here before we go into the Mo history so tell me a few things that you've binged lately that you've loved anything you've loved Jesus. Name a show. Like, okay, I'm watching been, Nine Perfect Lasso. Strangers now. I love Ted Lasso. Oh. Real, you know, I tried to oh watch Ted Lasso. I love- I, the first what did you 15, watch? How many did you watch? I watched the first 15 minutes three times and I hated it. I Keep watching. Keep watching. Honestly, it is a great show. I didn't want to watch it. I was like, oh, what do I care ew. about soccer? Yeah. 
but it's not about soccer. It's not about soccer at all. Um, you just gotta, if, if you keep watching it, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, you will love it. This is what and I hear. I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't watch it for a long time, but then I watched it and now I love it so much. I'm saving the second season. I'm not, because I binged the first season. Uh huh. So the second season, I'm just going very slowly. So I don't run out because Aww. I love it so much. And I like uh, the nine Nine strangers. Perfect Strangers. I watched the most recent weird. one last night. Weird. weird as shit. Yeah. Nicole is yeah. weird as shit. But fun. Uh, yeah. What else? Fun to watch. Uh, I don't know what else. You know, the last time old you... shows, like I the watch last... The West Wing all the time. Me too. <laughs> I'm, I'm in season four, I think. I have, I still have a lot left to go. I love it. I love the, it. The last time you were on, you had read, you were talking about The Handmaid's Tale. Well, because you felt like that's what was about to happen to us. And you know what? You weren't mm-hmm. far off. I um, wasn't far off. Yeah. But what a great show that is. I, I wait with baby well, breath. I stopped watching it because uh, only because uh, I'm, I'm, I, I don't think it's, it's like I didn't watch the thing with Kate Blanchett about Phyllis Schlafly. It's like, I don't want to be reminded of that bullshit. Yeah. I, you know, I, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not interested in going back there. It's, it's uh, too soon <laughs> to say. And it's yeah. a little too soon for me. With I, I read Handmaid's Tale and I really like the book. Mm-hmm. And they're looking back on this sort of quite weird time in, in our history. I mean, that's what happens at the end, basically. And um, uh, this Handmaid's Tale, it's gone from the book. And so I stopped watching it. I, 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 I'm not, I, I don't know. I, I didn't want to watch it anymore. Yeah, it, it's, it's brutal. I mean, it's like the most yeah. brutal thing to watch. I don't want to watch it. No, yeah. no, no thanks. So are you are you watching mostly com- are you watching mostly comedy? No, I also like um, like a lot of British shows like mm-hmm. uh, um, Vera. Have you watched Vera? No, Great I don't show. think. So. Okay, I'm writing. Oh my it god, down. I'm writing Vera. Down. I'm writing down Vera. I don't know if you have Acorn TV, I don't know if you have Acorn. Oh, you know, somebody asked me about a show on Acorn. No, I don't have Acorn. I'm gonna have to subscribe to it. It might be on something breath. else. Okay, it might be on something else. But I love Vera. I love all those sort of English um, like crime shows. There's another one. What's it called? It's all about. How did you watch Halifax? Whatever the um, what's the first part of the Halifax title? I, um, oh, God, I love it so much. Well, yeah, I know. I can't oh, remember oh. anything. I got to tell you a story so quick. Go ahead. Um, OK, uh, I'm at the grocery store and yeah. this was a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, and I'm buying uh, Last I'm buying Tango in Halifax. Sorry, it's oh fabulous. yeah, I, I saw the first. Yeah, I love that. I love those mm-hmm. actors. Yeah. Um. So I'm at the grocery store, and I'm buying mm-hmm. like lean cuisines and stuff like that. And the guy in front of me is buying a lot of meat, and so I said to him, I was like, "Oh, looks like you're having a big barbecue. I'm just going to go home and have a." And I couldn't think of frozen dinner. I could not think of that. <laughs> so I said, so "I don't like this." Oh, it looks like you're having a barbecue. I'm just going to go home and have a oven meal. An oven meal. <laughs> I had to say something. <laughs> because everyone was waiting with bated breath about what I was going to have. <laughs> they don't go in the oven. So they go so now in the microwave. Them. I know, I know. <laughs> But now we call them oven meals because, uh, oh, <laughs> because I couldn't think of the word. Well, oh. I, can't, I can't think of really what I watched. I just watch a lot of things. And I like like crime shows. I, okay, like, so uh, I'm watching season dramas. six. So I'm ending season six of Bosch, which I hadn't seen the last. So I have one more season I read, of Bosch. I read the books. I don't want oh. it. A lot of times if I read books and I really like the books, yeah. I can't enjoy the show because they get stuff wrong. And I think, yeah, it's like, uh, I really loved The Rook, the book. There's a book called The Rook and Stiletto um, by Daniel something. And um, okay. I really love this. I really love these books. And then they did it on um, I don't know, Netflix. I forget one of the things. Yeah. And they totally fucked it up. They totally uh, ruined it. They ruined it. I thought, yeah. so you took out the best part of this of this story it took out the best part yeah that's maddening it broke my heart because i was really excited but now i just don't go and look you yeah i'm assuming that you watched the queen's gambit 
Yes, I did watch that. That was good. That was pretty fabulous. He's, that that girl's an alien. She's amazing. Yeah, she's amazing. But she's like she looks like. Did you see her in that other thing? Um, I did watch something else she was in, and I like that also. This is the now, doll maker. Was, I don't like, remember. <laughs> you know, Paul Williams says fifteen seconds, and I ain't waiting. Meaning that when things fly, but eventually they come back. I don't remember what the other thing was, but I liked her in, in that the middle also. of the night. You go, yeah, don't make her. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. There. Oh my yeah. God. So, all right, Mo. So a lot of people here don't know your, how, how you came up, what, what, how, what your life trajectory was like. It's private. So it's private. <laughs> It's good to be on a, on, a, on a podcast when you don't want to talk about yourself. I think that's that's a, a good attribute. Um, so I know you have a lot of siblings. Where did you grow up, Mel? San Diego. In San Diego. And so what what sparked your showbiz? And besides the June Taylor dancers, what, what sparked <laughs> your showbiz passion? Like I, you I asked my mom, I, I asked my mom, when did I, when did you know I wanted to be an actor? And mm-hmm. she was like, when you always when you I guess when you're about four years old uh and I used to come out and perform scenes for them a lot of times they were very sad scenes <laughs> my mom said and I would cry at the end of them oh. um, because I I went and I would do I remember doing it in the mirror too I would like do a really sad scene about someone who died or something and cry and I don't know I always wanted to be an actor um, and I was. yeah so it was that because like you wanted to go in the tv screen like it was like did the tv turn you like were your parents no I was good I like to do it I like to do it I don't know why it's like why does anybody like to do anything I really liked um and I, I think I was I think I'm good at it so you know You're I think pretty that's fucking good at it oh huh, thanks but uh yeah, I mean, I don't think you do something for too long if you're not good at it. Oh, there you are know. many people. Maybe I could are, argue but... with you that there are many people who continue. Yeah, uh, well, uh, anyway, places. I, yeah. I like to do it and I'm and I'm good at it. So uh, I think it's the funnest thing in the world. I think improv is the funnest thing in the world. And, and when, did you start, when did you start doing that? When did you start doing improv? I started doing that when I was, I don't know, early 20s. There was a group called the International Blend Players, mm-hmm. and uh, who, which was run by a man named Don Victor, who mm-hmm. used to be in a group with Whoopi Goldberg called Victor and Goldberg. Um, and wow. they did they did a comedy show. Uh-huh. But anyways, he ran this place called the International Blend, which was a coffee house, and we did improv there. And that's the first time I ever did it. Um, somebody said to me, you should go do improv because you're funny. And I was like, okay. And so I went and I loved it. And, uh, and then I met Kathy. How did you she meet Kathy? A, well, we brought, we're both from San Diego mm-hmm. and um, she ran a feminist cafe. I can't remember the name of it. And she had seen the improv at uh, the International Blend. And she called me, I didn't know her very well. And she called me and she said, could you uh, get a, a woman's group together and come do improv here? at the Seminist Cafe. And I said, sure. <laughs> Which of course, I didn't know if I could, but I said I would. Mm-hmm. And so I asked these three other women if they wanted to go do improv at this cafe. And they said, yes. And that was, a, and we called ourselves Hot Flashes. <laughs> a lot of times when you have an idea in improv, you call, you know, people call it a flash or whatever. That was explained to me by the person who wanted to name it Hot Flashes. And I was like, okay, I didn't care what it was named. And um, so I was in that group for a few years. And then Kathy did you, and I- Mo, did you study it all or are you self-taught? I guess I'm self-taught. Mm-hmm. I'm self-taught. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. Um, uh, so anyways, then I was in Hot Fashion, which was really fun for a while. And then I got to be good friends with uh, Kathy Nahimi. Mm-hmm. And um, we used to- we just used to be these silly characters called Maddie and Sivvy. Um, and then we wrote the Kathy Mill show. Chris is this and, and then we went to, we did it um, in San Diego. And then we did it on off Broadway. Well, we did it at a place called Don't Tell Mamas. I remember Don't Tell Mamas. So how yeah. did you make that transition from San Diego to New York? We moved to New York. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good way to do it. Well, okay. Kathy had 
put in, um, she was working at the phone company. And so she put in a transfer to move to New York because she wanted to move to New York. Her best friend, Stephen, lived there. And so she had this transfer in for a long time. And then it came through. And I said, if you want to go to New York, you can. And so we're driving. And she said, my transfer came through. I can go to New York. Do you want to move to New York? And I was like, okay. <laughs> and that was pretty much it. I moved oh, to New York. To be young. Totally unprepared. Yeah. Uh, but that's how we got to New York. And then we did our show at Don't Tell Mama. Our friends had worked at Don't Tell Mama and did a show there. Uh, Steve Gunderson and Melinda Gelb. Very funny and talented. And then we did our show there. And then people at the second stage saw us, Carol Rothman and Robin Goodman. And they had us up at the second stage. And then uh, we did it at the West Side Arts. Matt, my friend. And, uh, and and won two OB Awards, which is not yes. shabby. That was on, a, yeah, on Off-Broadway, yeah. Won two OB Awards, yeah. That's pretty wonderful. Yeah. So how did, how did you segue from that? <laughs> no big deal. Two Everybody wins so OB what? Awards. Okay. Where are they? Are they down there in that house, your OB Awards? Um, I don't Where know. Where are those things? They're, they're here somewhere. <laughs> it's not a, it's like a, a plaque. It's not like a thing. They it's give not a you a frame, thing. a framed thing that says this is an Obi Award. It's here somewhere. I don't know where. I should know where that is, right? But I have no idea huh. where it is. Well, that's all right. You know, yeah. you you know, you got them. That's here all that somewhere. matters. Yeah, they're here somewhere. So how did how did Obi Awards and Off Broadway turn into television? Because bo- both um, of you ended up doing that. Yeah. Uh, well, after the show, we went and did the show in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And um, <clears throat> what year is and, this that you were doing the Kathy and Mo show? What years was this? Oh, back in the 1800s. Uh, no, it was uh, <laughs> 89, 90, I think, around okay. there on, on Off Broadway. That was like mm-hmm. the last. And then we did a tour, but our tour was just a sit down in San Francisco. So we went to San Francisco for a few months. And um, then I came back to New York. I guess I'd been in a movie by then. Mm-hmm. or something and um then somebody asked me if i wanted to do a show called uh, uh, uh want to do a show a uh, talk show on comedy central for women and i said and be the host of it and i said yeah and so that was called women allowed and it was on fabulous uh, show it was on comedy central and that was really great to do and then i went and did uh ab fab because somebody named ruby wax is an english actress and writer, comedian. She's not English, she's actually American, but she's practically English by now because she's lived there forever and married an English guy and has English children and had English TV shows. And she saw me in the uh, Kathy and Mo show and asked if I would do something on her show called The Full Wax, which was a TV show in Britain. Mm -hmm. And she wanted me to be an American reporter. And so I filmed all these five minute segments as Kathy Turner inside America you don't have to be bye-bye um so that I did those for her and that's how I met Jennifer Saunders and that's how I did absolutely fabulous and then that's pretty much it all sort of went from there I, I want to roll back a little bit when you were doing the the talk show on Comedy Central how, you mm-hmm. know back in those days uh it wasn't so uh common for them to acknowledge that women are funny and to give them a platform, right? Uh, all of that. So, mm-hmm. what was it like at Comedy Central as a woman talk it was show great. host? Feeling, they, were they respectful of you and all of that? Absolutely, it was fucking. It was absolutely great because I had a great. I had great people working on the show, and we had Nancy Geller, who was our like liaison to uh, H, not HBO, um, Comedy Central, mm-hmm. and um, we. We just did it and it was really good and it was really funny. We had, uh, all it was, was we'd have a topic and then we'd have comedians on about it and an expert on about it. And we did everything from abortion to racism to everything you can think of. Mm-hmm. Um, every issue you can think of, basically, we did, uh, we did a show about it. And um, it was fantastic. It was, yeah. uh, we mostly, we, I guess we had a couple of male comedians on about things but mostly women and uh and then the expert could be whoever was the most expert man or woman and um yeah it was a great show it was a really great show and 
the only thing was okay. that we, we we would do like 30 or 60 at a time 30 at a time maybe mm -hmm. and then we take a break and during that break people needed a job so they would go do other things and so then when we did it again some people wouldn't be available so you know i decided to take a job in uh, la and do a show called the mo show which so it's tell us about show. the mo show yes i was a talk show called the mo show it was in the daytime and uh it was on uh fox not fox news it was on like fox and yeah. um uh and they there's my dog i see your dog it's frank <laughs> um frank he's an annoyance yeah frank <laughs> frank is cute. anyways uh so i did a show called the most show and they uh they wooed me out to do it and said it was going to be like women allowed and i was like great but then it wasn't because <laughs> we we took a stance on women allowed about things we said this is what we think about this mm -hmm. so racism bad right, right? things like that abortion. oh yeah you didn't get to do that on Legal. fox yeah so i mean this was not like fox like fox news fox this was right. like the fox fox that you know that had nothing to do with the, that business i mean uh but it was more the people who ran the show kind of wanted me to for instance we wanted to do a show about gay teens mm -hmm. and um because somebody had read a book by these two old uh gay men i forget their names like forget everything uh but about how when they were teenagers they both wanted to uh, had commit tried to commit suicide and so we wanted to talk about gay teens and what they go through because uh a lot of times teenagers who are gay or certainly at that time might uh commit suicide and nobody people wouldn't know it was because they were gay they would just think oh what the hell happened and mm -hmm. um because they didn't tell anybody mm -hmm. And they thought there was no way they could live a, a, a happy life as themselves. Mm -hmm. So we just wanted to talk about what gay teens go through. And uh, there's this football coach uh, somewhere in Fountain Valley, I guess, who uh, or these kids who wanted to have a, a, a gay and lesbian uh, group at this high school and people marched against it. And so uh, anyway, so we had all these great stories. And then they said, but we want the other side. I was like, what other side? What do you mean we want the other side? Like the people who marched in Fountain Valley, we want them. I said, no way. Wow. No way. That's not what this is about. That's not what this is about. And if we want to have these teenagers on here, I want them to feel safe. Mm -hmm. And they will not feel safe with those MFers anywhere around them. Oh, uh, so they were trying to make about. you like, uh, like what, Jerry more, Springer. Jerry Springer, yeah. right. Yeah, Kind yeah, of yeah. a deal. Mm -hmm. And that's not what it was about. It wasn't about whether, there's no two sides to being a gay teenager. <laughs> You're a gay teenager. That's yeah. the side. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So, uh, and they got pretty adamant about it. And I said, well, then we have to do a different show because I'm not going to do that. And so we ended up doing that show that I wanted to do. And, but there was always a kind of an argument. So we, we decided to part ways after a while. We did a lot of good shows on there because they weren't that way about everything, obviously. Um, but they that's the kind of show they thought they were gonna get out of me. And that's not me at all. That's not who I am. Mm -hmm. There's no, I don't wanna hear it. There's no two sides to being a gay teen. <laughs> what side? Yeah. So anyways, I did that show for about, I don't know, a hundred and some odd shows and then- nice. Part of ways, yeah. Good dog. And and so how did uh? So then Tracy very Holman? quickly. Yeah, I'm gonna let this dog out. Go ahead. Come on, Frank. We'll talk. So Kathleen, what are you doing in Savannah? I I think you're still here. What are you doing in Savannah? Yes, it's Frank. I just um, let him out. I just let him out to, in there because he wants me to. He hates when I talk to people. He wants. He he, he wants he wants your full attention. I, look at me. Yeah. So anyway, that's the story of uh, the Mo Show. So that was the Mo Show. And then from the Mo Show was next. Uh, I know you did Tracy Takes On. I did do Tracy Takes On. That was great. Uh, great fun. Because there's a lot of improv on that show. Um, because she's so freaking funny. And um, yeah, I did a I played Dusty Rhodes <laughs> <laughs> in a few shows for uh, her character, Aaron, who was like a folk singer. Um, and I met the Roaches. 
who are uh, their sisters are a singing group and oh, they're mm -hmm. so cool. So I love doing that show. It was really fun to do. And uh, I love Tracy Nolman. Yeah, I did that. God, and, I've done a lot uh, of stuff because I'm older. You, sure <laughs> don't, I don't want to talk about it. I just got a senior discount at a. <laughs> I, she said, Are you over 61? I said, Well, well over. Yes. Yeah. Give me the discount. Let's bring it on. Okay. There's a good yeah. side to this. Yeah. Um, and so then on the original Mad About You, but also on the reboot, you're on the reboot yeah. too. So, have fun. so yeah. So, so <gasps> what was. I love doing Mad About You. I love uh, that show. I love those people. I love them. I love uh, Paul and Helen. Um, uh, I, uh, but I especially loved, um, I, a lot of people I got to meet doing that show. I mean, I got to meet and work with a little bit, Carol Burnett, who's a genius, oh. uh, and always one of my idols. And that was more than I could ask for. I got to work with Sidney Pollock, oh. who uh, played my therapist. I was the therapist on that show, and he played my therapist, which I thought was uh, kind of funny and uh yeah I just loved I loved doing that show they were they were really nice to me <laughs> that was nice it was nice when people were nice to you oh my god that's my phone uh-oh there she goes again this is like this is one of the funniest I it interviews off. I turned it off I'm so sorry <laughs> you're like oh no it's, it doesn't look doesn't we're, happen? On, we're on uh, we're on Facebook live who gives a fuck it doesn't yeah. matter it's so like who cares live, in the live world yeah, we're just, we're just uh, yeah, but I love, yeah, I love doing that show. And then that's the last job I did before the pandemic. Okay, so what I was it like? The, the I saw it, I went to like the SAG thing when uh, Paul and Helen came to talk about the reboot and they showed the first, and it was like, again, it was like my life. I used to think that they used to come into my living room and tape <laughs> Gabe and I in our lives because oh, we felt so like funny. we were Paul. We felt like right. we were Paul and Jamie. And then the reboot, their daughter goes to NYU. My daughter went to NYU, you know, like oh, she's following her to school. You know, all of this shit felt very familiar. Mm -hmm. So did it feel familiar did it feel different it, it, it felt different and it felt familiar because um I was <laughs> still after all these years I faced it and they were they're just as funny and um a, a lot of the same people came back and and I got to see them and uh yeah it was really uh it was really fun to do it was uh it was nice to be asked back to that yeah that's Love really it. lovely. Are they going to, are they going to do more? I mean, I know it was just before the pandemic that that was going on. Yeah. I have um, no idea. I have no idea. So, so Mo, are you, are uh, during the pandemic, are you like doing self tapes? Are you like auditioning? Are you, I did do, I did do some self tapes and I'm really bad at, it. I'm just, I'm oh. better in the room. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I really do. I think I'm better in the room. I'm not good at self tapes. Uh, I'm bad at it. I, I, uh, I've never been hired from a self tape yet, so that'll tell you something where we're headed. Mo's not going to work anymore. I no. did work. I worked. A, I worked a couple of weeks ago, but that wasn't from a self tape. That was just, What'd you do? A show called Single Drunk Female. Really funny. I like the really title. Funny, yeah, uh, really funny creator and really funny actors in it, and Trayvon Free, who just won an Oscar for a short called Two Distant Strangers, directed it. And so that was really fun. It was really fun. They were fun to work. They were these younger gals uh, who were very funny and fun to work with and just dear, dear people. And uh, the, everybody was great. It was so fun to be. The only thing was there was a lot of math. Okay, so, and so how, how did that? You were obviously with other people at performing. Yeah. So yeah. What, what kind of COVID protocols did they take? What was, did you feel I, safe? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm vaccinated. Right. Uh, so um, I was okay, mm -hmm. but there was, and then they tested you. They test everybody all the time. I mm -hmm. was tested like I altogether maybe six times and so I had to go and there was a COVID case, but mm -hmm. it was nowhere near us, mm -hmm. but they shut down for one day just to try and figure out, you know, things, but then mm -hmm. we lost our location. So I had to come home and then go back. Um, so I got tested a lot. And um, yeah, you wear your mask or this, if you have your makeup on, you wear a plastic sort of a shield over your face and everybody mm -hmm. wore masks. They're very, it's serious, you know. And they you don't felt want to safe on the set? Yes, mm -hmm. very safe. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I think my, 
all the actors that I acted with uh, were vaccinated. Mm-hmm. And all the people that I was really in close contact with were vaccinated and all had masks on. So not too much to ask. And we all lived through it. We all lived through wearing masks in 95 degree heat in Georgia. Oh, wow. I mean, it's, 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 that's where Kathleen is. She's in Georgia, in Savannah, Georgia. I don't know oh. why still, but I know there's a gig involved. So, so okay, so you're right. So you've been writing and you're writing. Yeah. Kind. Of, I'm know. writing. I, I just, uh, yeah. And then I'm rewriting. <laughs> I went, also went through and looked at a lot of the stuff I've written before. And uh, I got on a little rewriting spree, which... It's hard to ever be done. You know, you're a writer. It's hard to just go, okay, that's it. That's how I want it to be. It's, it's impossible. It you just have to not years. look at it again. That's right. You just have to not look at it. You got to say, okay, that's how I want it to be and take it away from me because I will fix, 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 fix. It's crazy. You were working on, you read, you read here in my living room, something very autobiographical. Mm-hmm. Did you, have you, worked on that i have a little bit um that was really not... powerful and wonderful and i hope you go Thank back you. to it yeah um well it, since it is personal it's about my family so mm-hmm. it's like even what i don't know yeah you know it's about people you know you can't just say and you know anything you want because they are alive <laughs> they have lives and maybe they don't want it to be known so um talking about my childhood is one thing because mm-hmm. you know we we're all kids then but you know, as grown-ups it's a different thing so I did more of when I was a kid so a lot of stuff happened we're a big raucous drunken drug addicted you know Roman Catholic Irish family so so you know you know, we haven't busy. talked about this and I didn't ask you uh, uh before we came on the air if there's anything you don't want to talk about but I'm a sober woman and Me I too. okay so uh did you have, did you have a bad bottom? What, what, why did you get sober? I got sober. My uh, brother got very sick mm-hmm. and uh, almost died. And that's when I found out uh, um, he had pancreatitis from um, drinking. Mm-hmm. And uh, I... You know, I thought, am I, do I drink that much? Is that going to happen to me? Do I drink that much? You know, and then I went to Las Vegas to do something. Uh, what was it? The Celebrity Poker Show. And I couldn't get drunk. What? I know. In Las Vegas, when they're <laughs> just throwing drinks at you. They're throwing them at you. And I was like, it's not working. And um, so I got home and I called a friend of mine. I was like, that how and she's a sober woman one of my best friends who had been sober for only a year at that point and she said how are you and I said oh, I'm feeling a little a little malaise lonely <laughs> and she was like really and so by the end of that conversation uh she said here's an AA meeting you might want to go to and that was it so it wasn't I wasn't at the you know living under a bridge or anything um but I did feel hopeless and like um I didn't want to I didn't want to turn out like uh people who continue to drink themselves to death so I wasn't I I, I wasn't at the bottom as they say at the bottom of the elevator <laughs> but um I certainly wasn't in the penthouse either I I was uh I drank too much and um, I always tell people I uh I I, I guess it's been 16 years something like mm-hmm. that and I say, they say, would you like a drink? And I say, no, I had my share uh, 15, <laughs> by, 15 years ago. I, I drank my share. And then if I drink any more, it's going to go into other people's shares. <laughs> so, so you got sober in program. Do you, do you go to meetings? Is that part of your I life? I do. Mm-hmm. Always. Yeah. I and how, and I, how, go ahead. I just have sober sisters and I have a tribe and it's, uh, I'm grateful for it very grateful as I know you are as very much so yes very much so and how about you know my kids it turns out oddly are normies which kind of is very strange to me because they have addiction all over their family right. tree um yeah. so did you have you had to go through that as a parent 
No. You either? No. Uh, and yet, I mean, we can say yet, not the one, because I did, you know, I didn't have a problem till I did. So, you know, so, I spent a lot of time drinking like a normie myself. And um, so, you know, it's in our, it's in their genes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but they know it, you know, they're cognizant because of us, that it's a possibility for them, I think. Um, not, I, that, not that it'll make any difference, but at least they have that in their pocket. So wait, you drank as a normie for the early part of your life? Yeah, I mean, I didn't used to even have liquor in the house. I mean, I didn't have liquor in the house. Uh, yeah. Did something Things escalate only... you drinking, do you think? Um, not any one thing, I mm -hmm. don't think. I think there was a time in my life when I did a lot more partying. Mm -hmm. you know going to the Roxy all the time and the you know the Palladium and you know, all that during that time in the 90s was it early 90s so did, 80s, whatever. did success uh magnify amplify that no. part of your life no 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 not really um I don't know what I just realized that you know the last few years before I Stop drinking altogether that I drank every night mm -hmm. I didn't get drunk every night particularly but I do you know it was mm -hmm. it was a thing and I mm -hmm. and I had to have liquor in the house whereas for a long time I never I didn't have liquor. you know mm -hmm. I didn't have liquor in the house just wasn't so you know you can I think you can be an alcoholic and not particularly drink alcoholically always but then when you start <laughs> I think you know it, and I certainly knew it. So, yeah. Did did you did were drugs part of your story? They were part of my story. Would were, were drugs oh, part of your story? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but not um, uh, not. I wasn't as comfortable with them as I was with drinking. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say. I mean, I did cocaine like everybody. I smoked pot. But I didn't do, I've done mushrooms a couple of times, but any of that stuff, any of the real hallucinogenic stuff, I wasn't interested in that much, you know? Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, no big problem. so Mo, your life now, so you live with a sibling, do you live with, a, do you live with, a, with your yeah. sister? Yeah. And yeah. So what was your, what's your COVID, what's your COVID world been like? Did you go to the soup? Did you keep going to the supermarket? Did yes. And ordered as well, but we used to go to the supermarket and then come home and wash everything down. Yeah. All the packaging. We used to do that. And yeah. I used to wear gloves to the supermarket too. Yes. And um, which is how you feel sort of ridiculous, but at the time it seemed perfectly right to do. Mm -hmm. um, and uh kept very I kept as safe as I could I was like the cop of it all everybody else was saying you know in my family a little bit not quite as copy as me not quite as like put your mask on and uh whatever don't stand so close to that person or do you have your mask you know all of that stuff I'm I was very um cognizant of all of that stuff and 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 kind of the the boss of it the, you were the boss. I, I didn't want I didn't like I, I don't want COVID I don't want to fucking have COVID mm -hmm. which is why I wish everyone would get vaccinated and uh except the people who can't because whatever autoimmune or, or uh whatever they have that they can't physically mm -hmm. get vaccinated or little, little kids yet but um if you can't get vaccinated you should get vaccinated that's a oh, patriotic yes. thing to do you're not a real American if you don't get vaccinated and help your fellow citizens through this so I think a lot of people are very unpatriotic when it comes to uh, their fellow citizens, other Americans. They don't care about Americans. They only care about themselves. And I think that's a pity. And, you know, but they also voted for Trump. They did. Those same, very same people. Those Many same of people, them. yeah. Those same people. Because he was all like, yeah, it's nothing. You drink bleach, whatever. But, you know, then it's this, this sort of, uh, disconnect in their brains because it's like they'll say it's because of Trump we got this vaccine so fast but then they won't take the vaccine so mm -hmm. don't don't be so proud of him for that if you're not even going to do if I get to take the vaccine you yes, don't get the, the really but even if he did I would say yay thank you that's one good thing you did 
but uh, then he didn't encourage people immediately to go out and get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. He didn't say the minute we get that vaccine, you people jump on that because it's important. He didn't, you know. No, so. he didn't. So, so Mo, how has your life changed? Has your life changed? You got the, when did, did you get the vaccine months yeah. ago? Yeah, uh, my second shot was, I got it as soon as I could. Mm -hmm. I went and checked every day. And then I was like, yay. So in April, I got my second shot. And so did, has life changed since you're vaccinated? Do you feel well, I got freer? All my friends down here were vaccinated. So we all got to get together, <clears throat> which we continue to do without masks on. And because uh, we would go for walks with six feet between us mm -hmm. with masks on. Um, right. But, you know, as soon as we could, we all got together. And so that was great. And I went to LA and saw some friends up there who'd all been vaccinated. And without masks on, so that was great. And that's how it's changed is that the people I know who are vaccinated, I feel comfortable or did feel comfortable. Being. Till you spoke to me and you heard about all the breaks. Well, no, <laughs> till the Delta variant and the other variants that have come, come down the pike because so there's so many um, unpatriotic Americans. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm gonna call them from now on because that is, like they that. act like they're patriots, but they're not because they don't care about other Americans. They don't care about America. Mm -hmm. Americans are what makes America. That's all I'm going to say about that. There you go. So do you go, do you go to restaurants now? Do you go? Um... No, I'm not a big restaurant. Go I was never a big restaurant. Go mm -hmm. I, uh, um, so no, I don't go to restaurants. Would you go to a concert? Would you go to a movie? What, what are you comfortable doing? I would doing? go to a concert if they make sure people are vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And um, like, I guess, who, who did it? Dave Grohl. What's the name of his? Do you know? Uh, yeah. Fighters. Um, yeah. Um, I guess they did a, a concert and you had to be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And um, so Bruce that, Springsteen got booted off Broadway because he was insisting that people get vaccinated. So they like closed what? him down or something. Yeah. Bruce. That's, yeah. That's yeah. bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. So if they said you have to have your, and not vaccine card, but in California, you can go online to the health department to yes. get a vaccine smart card. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would want. For everyone to show that and, and then i would go it, indoors outdoors i might be a little more feel you know, a little more comfortable as long as people were wearing masks i don't want to get covid i've seen some hope people go through and continue to go through hell because of covid long haulers which we talked about mm -hmm. do you know <laughs> any i do and it's mm -hmm. it's a life ruin it's a life ruin they didn't die but mm -hmm. It's a life for him. How about Jack? Him. How how comfortable is Jack in the? How does he? I'm curious about the the next generation. Like how how does he feel about COVID? Does he is he cautious? Is he not? How does he? He's feel? cautious. He's vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, for a minute there, I think he was thinking we don't know enough about because he was listening to whatever about the vaccine. But then he mm -hmm. got vaccinated, and he's glad he did. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he's very, he is very, you know, he's cautious. He he's no problem wearing a mask and all of that. And uh, yeah, so he's okay. I mean, I feel bad for our kids. I feel bad that mm -hmm. he, his 21st birthday was right smack dab in the middle of COVID. You know, 2020, 20, yeah. turns 21, big deal. Yeah. Turns 22, still don't have COVID. So it's a bummer. Have you kind of gone to spend that? time together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I brought him down here a lot since uh, everyone's vaccinated. Um, and he just got, he was, got, we were just going to get his license. Um, he was, I guess, 19 at the 20th time. Yeah, he didn't get his license for a long time because him and his friends were just like, well, we don't need an Uber. Well, he, riders, motor, not motorcycle, or uh, skateboards, you think the bus, they were very much didn't want to drive. Mm -hmm. um but he was just about to start to get his license when it all stopped so he just got his license oh nice but i brought him down here a lot so we could drive nice and he has his license so, i'm very happy i'm so that's so lovely um nikki luongo asks if you and kathy uh will ever work together again yes you? of course absolutely yeah, we're we're looking at a project right now to write me and Kathy, but she has to do um, she's doing a movie, I guess, 
starting in November, October anyways. And after she's done with that, then we're gonna uh, release it down and, and figure out how to write this thing. How about you? How, how do you feel about film as opposed to television? Do you have a preference on, on the medium for work for you? No. Mm -hmm. I, I like, uh, I like, I like, you know what I love? What? I love um, multi-camera, you know, uh, sitcoms. Mm -hmm. I love those only because, not only because, they're fun to do. There's a live audience. Mm -hmm. And um, it's the most like a regular job because you go, you know, basically Monday through Friday. And uh, on Friday, a lot of times you, you take, sometimes depending on the show, you might take on a Wednesday or whatever. Um, but it's the most like a regular job. Mm -hmm. uh, in that way whereas you don't have to you don't you don't always have to like go on location or like I just did this the show there and we were in a park you know on location and they were at wherever um so I like you just have to you go to work and that's where you work and then you leave yeah, yeah. so I like I like doing doing that a lot I, any job I'll take let me tell have, you have you thought about writing that kind of vehicle for yourself have you written, written that kind of yeah i wrote i wrote a pilot once and uh we got it made and um yeah but i don't that it's really hard it's hard mm -hmm. to we made a pilot and they didn't pick it up and i just thought i don't want to do that again mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah it's hard it's hard work writing a writing writing is hard work all it those television work. writers mm -hmm. that's hard work and uh because you have a lot of people to please Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the difference between like Ab Fab and a sitcom here. It's the only person that has to be pleased uh, when I did Ab Fab was Jennifer Saunders. Oh. And then she had a producer who would, you know, they would talk about stuff, but she wrote it. We didn't have to perform it for anybody except the, the tech crew. That's who we performed it for before we actually did it. Right. And here you have to do it for the writers and you have to do it for the producers and you have to do it for the network and then you do the show, which is crazy. It, you know, especially if you have a really brilliant uh, sort of head writer or whoever. Did you run into show. that on your shows where things would get booted because of why did did that kind of stuff happen on set? That what do you the, mean? That, that the execs would say, no, you, you can't do that. Yes. Yeah, all the time. Mm -hmm. but that's not funny enough, or you can't say that because I was on a show and they made a joke about Woody Allen, of the Woody Allen and Soon Yi. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was back, you know, right when, it, right after it happened, I guess. And they're like, oh no, you can't, you can't make that joke. And um, it was putting down Woody Allen. <laughs> it was really like, and they wouldn't allow it. And it was really funny. I don't remember what it was, but it was really funny. Did you and watch so, yeah, that, that Woody was, Allen? Did you watch that yeah. Woody Allen? Me and and did that alter your opinion in any way? Or were no, you? No, already... I always thought he was an asshole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> since it happened, since mm -hmm. the first time I heard of it, because mm -hmm. uh, that's just he's known that girl since she was what I don't know a, a young teenager, 11, 12, 13, mm -hmm. 14, mm -hmm. as his girlfriend's daughter. So that's just a that's just sick. That's just purely purely that's all that is and um and what he did to his actual uh his his, his adoptive daughter with with Mia Farrow um yeah he's, he's not fooling anybody mm -hmm. he's fooling anybody people are in jail but he's not he's never going to go to jail because no. he's a privileged white guy white so, privilege. There so you go. Mo, what do you do what do you do with with stuff like that so I thought Mia was over the deep. I, I thought Mia was start. I, I didn't really know what I felt about Mia at the time. I, I've completely changed my opinion having seen that. But right now, if Woody Allen came out with a new movie, would you not watch it? Would you not see it? Do you, I don't you, watch it. Mm -hmm. I haven't. I don't yeah. watch them. Uh, mm -hmm. Last one I watched. I don't even know because even before that, I'm just not a huge, I'm just not a huge fan. I was just never particularly a huge fan of Woody Allen. So it wasn't like a, a huge sacrifice for me not mm -hmm. to, you know, banana, bananas. I was like, hey, well, 
Really? So I like uh, bananas, but okay. yeah, that's how I thought. Yeah, you know, I'm just not not my cup of mm -hmm. tea, as mm -hmm. Kathy's mom used to say. <laughs> not my cup of tea. Yeah. So yeah, it was not a it's not a hardship. It wasn't a hardship. So yeah. uh, Nikki's also asking, do you have any stories from Ab Fab from the Ab Fab set that you want to share? Oh God. Um, well. <laughs> sometimes we drink champagne really uh, ah. while we're doing the show yeah this is before I got sober um and so that was fun uh, <laughs> <laughs> um and people would like I, I met uh I met some pretty interesting people doing that show you know um and uh they're just like I love them all so much you know I've known them I've watched like Jen's kids grow up they're like in their 20s now and they have mm -hmm. kids of their own and that's crazy right because the first mm -hmm. so the first time I did that show um how long do we do this for the first time I did that show um yeah. they like they didn't particularly know who I was because I you know I, I nobody knew who I was particularly um except people in New York uh and so she wanted me to play this character Bo Chrysalis and they said, uh, no, you have to get an English actor. We don't want to fly her over and do all that. And she's like, well, it's based on her, which is a big lie because it wasn't based on me at all. They were like, <laughs> all right, we'll fly her over, but you have to put her up. So I met Jennifer, mm -hmm. but I didn't know her particularly, but I stayed at her house. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> for that first show. And so I slept in the, in the sort of office, whatever, fold out couch deal. And um, I'm sleeping and in the morning, a little knock on the door and there's a little tiny blonde, little cherub walks in and <laughs> says, hello, may I have a banana? <laughs> like, yes, of course, I'll give you anything you want. You have to show me where the bananas are though. <laughs> and so took her little hand and walked me down to the kitchen and um, Beatty. And now she is on TV, little Beatty who wanted the banana. <laughs> Uh -huh. is on tv in britain she's an actress very funny funny actress um and so yeah and so i stayed at her house and then i've stayed at her house since then now that i know her i can actually stay at her house and not feel like well, i'm an intruder that's a yeah. that's... And sometimes the night before we shoot the show she'd be sitting on the couch going and then what and then what <laughs> yeah it was great how was it good. doing this that 70s show um with... oh wow that was, um, I loved, I loved, the, uh, the, I mean, I did the kids. Mila Kunis is the nicest girl ever. Really? Uh, I love, I love her. I loved her on that show. She was, could not have been sweeter and kinder and mm -hmm. a nice girl. Um, and, um, and then the grown ups were all great, you know, uh, Deborah and, um, now you're going to make me remember my names, which I can't, uh, I'll put my foot up your ass. That guy. <laughs> Uh, What's his name? The father of. Uh, anyways, yeah, he, they were all they were all great fun, and most of the kids were nice. Because it was a real boys you know. club. The Topher and Danny Masters, all those guys, Wilmer and, um, and Ashton. Well, and... they were just they were in a hit show, and they were like twenty, so they believed in themselves a lot, which was, I guess, you have to do that to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I, I very much liked Mila Kunis. She was a, a good girl, and and Topher Grace could not have been nicer to me. He was he was nice. He was lovely. Um, but here's a funny story. <laughs> when uh, you know Tommy Chong's on that show, uh, mm -hmm. and so uh, sometimes the so one particular dressing room. If I, I love Tommy, show, by the way. Yeah. So do I. Who doesn't? <laughs> so. When I was doing the show and he wasn't doing the show, I used the dressing room he used. So I, Jeff was little then, and uh, I brought him, I don't know, to work because, uh, and, and the babysitter, everybody was there. And so he was looking in the desk in the, in the, uh, uh, in the dressing room, and he pulls out this film canister, and he's trying to open it up, and he opens it up, and it's got pot in. Of course it does. And I'm like, oh, honey, no, give mama that. <laughs> and I thought, how perfect. This is where, of course, you'd find the pot. 
Hell yeah. Right? Tommy Chong. So I thought that was hilarious. Uh, that was a good story from there. I'm a, I'm a sober woman and marijuana was my drug of choice. And when Tommy was in this living room, not long ago, right before the pandemic, he gave me a hermetically sealed tube with a joint, a Tommy Chong joint in it, which I haven't. Oh, wow. Yeah. There you so, go. Well, it's a piece cool. of art. That's it nice. is. It's, it's a wonderful thing. It's, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Well, Mo, I, you know, I hope that we get to, to see more of you soon. I hope you're, that you write away and, and, Thank you, uh, Vicki Abelson. And get yourself How about out. Vicki Abelson, who just takes control of things and just does shit. It's so amazing. You just do shit. You're like, you know what? I'm going to do this woman who writes things. Everyone's going to come over to my house. And people are going to do it. You know what? I'm going to write a book. I think I'll write a book. I'm going to write a book. And then this. It's just like you just do shit. And it's very inspiring. Well, I don't know. I don't, I, we didn't even talk about that. You were one of the very first women to be in my living room uh, with Kathleen. I'm trying to remember who was here that day besides, but it was 13 oh, was years good. ago. It was a long time ago when you first, yeah, it was That's a long time ago. Crazy. And then, then when Nesmith and we went up to Big Sur and that was, that so, was fun. so amazing. And, and Jack was up there with us and we mm-hmm. had like the best time, the best week. We really did. Was so that phenomenal. Was great. And you've I, just yeah. always shown up for me. When I started doing this, it was on the radio like four years ago and you came and did that. And you've just always been great. And I'm really grateful to you. And I, I love I, you, Vicki Abelson. I love you, Mo Gaffney. And I want, I, I, I really am excited that you're writing. I hope you go back and, and you know, finish that memoir yeah, thing. So do I. But there might be a TV show on. <laughs> we might have to, you know, something streaming. Excuse me, click. No, I will. I'm going to, I will absolutely do that. <laughs> I really yeah. do. And, and it was one, even though we're seeing each other through the goddamn computer, it's wonderful to see you. You look fabulous. Love the blonde. Thank you. Thank you. you too. I need a little job here, but yeah, well, why yeah not? All I'm old. I can do anything I want now. I yes. Figure. So I'm going to do this. I might even, I might get it dyed maybe blue. Just for fun. Ooh, I kind of like that. Why not? That would be, why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? So I, I think the one thing I'm going to task you to do, I'm going to ask you to do is to, to get up there and, and get on your social media about getting out the vote. Cause it's so important. I will. There's I'll so much right Democrat, now. democratic apathy out there that it scares me that they're just going to, well, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's, I'm pretty sure he's going to, he's going to win because you know how I know that how? Because they're already saying if he doesn't win, uh, it's, it's, uh, voter fraud yeah well, so that's well, how you know he's, he's probably gonna win well, the other thing. So. if he it's... doesn't win yeah so yeah i will i will do that do that thing do that thing that you do i guess i Thank should you. do it on facebook too which I never you should do it anymore. i know you should do it on facebook too all right all right, I will. All right good okay. i love you love thank you. you for doing bye this. everybody who's you. watching if anyone's bye. watching you're very bye. handsome and pretty